Okay, guys. Name of the game this week is braising. So the recipe in your packet's a Thai curry braised dish. We're gonna do it with butternut squash. I also have some chicken. I'm gonna show you a chicken variety too. Um, you can do either one. So we're gonna cut the butternut squash into pieces like this. So I used just the neck of the butternut squash. The butternut squash looks like this. I peeled it. Um, if you're gonna use this end, you would peel it, cut it in half and scoop out all of the seeds. I'm not gonna use this much. I don't need that much because I already have um, what I need here. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna roast it, and I'm gonna add it to my pumpkin for my pumpkin pie. Um, so I have this cut up. You can also buy butternut squash already cut up in the store, which isn't um, the worst idea because butternut squash can be kind of a pain to cut. Um, I don't mind if you guys do that, but it's also really nice to cut it up. If you don't need a whole lot, I would recommend buying up the cut up pieces. Most stores sell it. Um, so you're gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces, or I guess a little bit more than bite-sized pieces, about one inch cubes, um, so that, it, cause it's gonna break down in the cooking process and become a little bit smaller. So um, it's okay if it's a little bit bigger. We don't want it to cook, or we don't want it to be too big, um, so it takes forever to cook. So you're gonna turn on your heat to medium high, and we're gonna sear off these pieces of butternut squash. And if you were doing the chicken, you would do the same thing. You'd sear off each side of the chicken. So um, I'm gonna get my pan hot and I'm gonna add some grape seed oil. The other ingredients we're gonna use today, we're gonna use some ginger again, just like you guys used with stir fry. I know some of you didn't love as much ginger. So if your family didn't like the ginger, cut back on it or you can even skip it if you didn't like it all together. Um, there is ginger in the curry paste, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, so if your family was on the edge about it and you're making this dish, um, I would leave this out and just add this. So ginger and then garlic. Um, so remember for garlic, you're gonna cut off that little woody end. You're gonna take your knife, blade facing towards the table, or yeah, blade facing towards the cutting board, smack it just to release those papers. And you should have a compost bowl ready to go. Remember, wash your hands, keep your stations clean. So, and then you're gonna throw away those papers. So I'm just gonna do um, three cloves of garlic here, the ones that I have that came out here. Do another one. Um, the other thing we have here is the yellow onion. So I'm gonna show you how to cut that yellow onion once more. And the other thing I'm going to show you is this curry paste. So for the curry paste, so I washed my pot, so that's why it's taking a little bit of time. I washed my pot when I got in here, so there's a little bit of water I'm trying to get to go away before I add my oil and my squash in there, because remember, oil and water don't like each other, um, so we don't want to add that oil too soon. So there's no more or there's no more water in there, so I'm gonna add the oil. I'm using grapeseed oil. You can use any sort of high temperature oil. So I'm just gonna add about two tablespoons, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Um, when I used to work at another place, we'd call it blurps. So two blurps of oil, so just a little bit of oil, just enough to coat the bottom of that pan. I don't want a lot of extra oil, because remember, we're not frying here. We're just searing off the butternut squash. So I'm gonna add that squash, and then I'm gonna show you, and remember, add it from as close as you can so the oil doesn't splatter on you. So this, this curry paste, so this is my favorite brand, My Ploy Curry Paste. If you're going to New Seasons, they also sell curry, a yellow curry paste that's really good. If they don't have this brand, um, but they have a local brand that's really good. So any sort of yellow curry paste is what I recommend for this recipe. Um, it's the mildest and I think it has the best flavor. So it's a lot of turmeric and a lot of ginger. You guys, if you're not, if you don't love curry, don't buy this huge amount. They're smaller amounts that you can buy. We eat curry a lot at my house because uh, like when cold and flu season is coming on, um, you start to get a cold, this will knock it right out. This and a little bit of chicken stuff. So um, I'm gonna show you guys that in just a little bit, how to deal with that in just a little bit, but I'm gonna cut up this onion here. So for, remember for the onion, I'm gonna cut off the sprout end and I'm gonna trim off the hairs of the root end. Just trim them off, remember, so they're staying together. And I'm gonna cut that in half. 
we're gonna do a julienne cut on this because a lot of you said in your stir fry you didn't love that the onions disappeared. Um, so this is gonna cook for a half an hour to 45 minutes. So I don't want my onions um, to completely disappear. So I'm gonna cut it into a julienne cut. If you don't love the long strips of onion, you can still dice it. I'll show you that one again as well. Um, so cut off or trim off anything on the outside of this onion. Um, if you're having trouble with onions and they're really bothering your eyes, what you can do is you can get it, um, get the onion to this point and you can pop it in your freezer for like 10 minutes and it gets cold enough that where when you cut it, it's not going to release all that sulfuric acid thing that mixed with the saline in your eyes is what's making you cry. Um, and it'll be easier and quicker to cut without crying. So. Remember, root end facing away from me, holding my knife, thumb and index finger, three fingers tucked behind. I have the claw, and I'm gonna just follow the lines, not cutting through that root end. So remember, I'm gonna julienne this because I like the julienne cut. Um, so I'm just gonna, right where I started cutting, I'm gonna cut that right off, and then I have the long strips. If you didn't wanna julienne it, you would turn it around and just dice it. Okay, so again, cut in those quarter inch strips all the way around. And then if you're gonna dice it, you would just come back, dice it into small pieces like this. And you can do both if you want to, just like I just did. But this onion was sitting in my car overnight, so it was cold last night, so it's not bothering me at all because it's freezing. Um, so I'm gonna add it, I, once I get a little bit of color on my squash, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Because remember, caramelization is flavor. So I'm looking for a little bit of caramelization on my squash in order to add, have that delicious flavor. So I'm gonna wait on that guy. Um, and that once it, that caramelizes, then I'm gonna add my onions to caramelize those too. Um, I'm gonna cut up my garlic and my ginger. I'm not gonna add those until I add my chicken stock. I there's chicken stock in this recipe, but I wanna get those prepped out. I don't wanna just stand here. And when you guys are searing things off and when you're looking for caramelization, it's okay to just kinda keep one eye on it, but you don't need to hover over it. it sometimes it can feel like it takes a long time. So, I'm gonna mince up the garlic. And remember, mincing it, you can hold your knife up here and just rock back and forth. Or I guess pivot back and forth. So I'm gonna push that off to the side. So that's about two tablespoons of garlic there. Um, and then the ginger, if you're gonna use ginger, um, you can either use a spoon to peel it or you can really carefully peel off the skin on the outside. Um, I didn't grab a uh, ginger peeler, which is a teaspoon, remember? So I'm just gonna gently peel that off. Plus there's some parts on here that are a little gray, so I'm just gonna trim those off. So it's probably better that I did it this way. And then remember, you wanna get those out of your way into your compost bowl. You're gonna mince this the same way. So break it down just like this, and then come back over it with your knife like that. Okay, I'm gonna check on my squash starting to get a little bit brown here. Not quite there yet. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my chicken. So I'm gonna brown my chicken um, on both sides and then I'll add everything to it. So added my ginger and garlic together and I'm just gonna mince those. Remember ginger, you wanna have really small pieces because it doesn't taste very good getting a large piece. Um, it's kind of shocking and it can be a little bit spicy. And then, speaking of spicy, there's these little peppers at the store. They're called <coughs> Thai chilies. So Thai chilies are really spicy. When we're in the kitchen, people like to eat these, have like pepper tasting contests, um, and it usually ends in someone drinking all of my milk. Um, but they're very spicy. So if your family likes a little bit of heat, or if someone is has a cold and wants to feel a little better, um, heat will actually help with the uh, cold and flu symptoms and um, make you kind of sweat it out. So I'm gonna just cut this into small little pieces. Remember when you guys, if you guys are cutting up peppers, 
you if you touch them with your hands if you touch the insides with your hands you want to wash your hands immediately you want to wash your hands with cold water and then switch to hot soapy water if you want to tell the heat of a pepper this is kind of a fun activity so i got down to the end here these little stems if you want to tell the heat of a pepper you cut off the stem and lick it i'm not going to do that because I, know, I can smell that these are really hot but if you want to know how hot it is so that you know how much to add so if it's like burn your mouth obviously you wouldn't want to add two um if your family doesn't like heat that much but if you taste it sometimes you'll lick it and you'll be like oh it tastes like a bell pepper there's nothing there so that's just a good way to see the heat okay so i'm getting color on my squash um, I'm going to try to grab a piece here. I'll grab, I have some tongs here too. Um, so you can see that. Some nice caramelization on my butternut squash. So I'm going to add that back in and then I'm going to add the onions to that so I can get some color on my onions. Okay. So. And if you have some buildup on the bottom of your pan of that caramelization um, and it's starting to even kind of get too dark and it's scaring you a little bit, um, you can add a little bit of water to it. So a little bit of water will pull up that caramelization um, and add it into your mixture. So it's called deglazing. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my chicken stock and I added just a couple tablespoons there. So remember, I just bought chicken broth from Safeway, um, the generic kind, which is totally fine. Costco has a really good one as well. Um, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of that in, and then I'm gonna scrape up all those sugar bits on the bottom of the pan, and that'll help release them. So we're gonna let this simmer for a little bit, um, and I am going to get a little bit of my curry paste out, and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my chicken stock, which I need to grab a container and a spoon. So, for this much, which will feed about four people a good size um, meal, I'm gonna take out about three tablespoons of curry paste, which I'll show you guys what that looks like, and pack the tablespoons. So about that much curry paste. Um, and then this, I just package up and I'll take back home and it'll live in my fridge for a year and be just fine. There's nothing in it that'll go bad as long as you wrap it up. Um, so, and we use it all the time. I add it to a lot of different soups just because turmeric's really good for you, ginger's really good for you, and I like the way it tastes. Uh, so the curry paste is in here and I'm gonna add my I'm gonna fill this container up with chicken stock and I'm gonna mix it up in here. And that will help it mix in to your soup better. Another thing that I have here is coconut milk. So there's a bunch of different brands of coconut milk you can use. I like to get, just to show you guys, I like to get all the, um, the store brands. So this is like Safeway Signature Select coconut milk, um, which is totally fine. Whatever you can find in the store, I definitely would say the least expensive is just fine. The only thing, um, unless you want a lower fat option, I would buy the full fat option of coconut milk. So some of them say light, but if you, the ones that I want you guys to get, it'll just say coconut milk, okay? Um, and you'll just need one can of that. So my onions have started to become translucent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this up, make sure it's mixed up really well. I'm gonna add that, it smells so good. Add that to my mixture. And then I'm gonna add all of my ginger, garlic, Thai chilies in here. I'm gonna add a can of coconut milk in here. So coconut milk, so you can see it doesn't wanna come out. It doesn't wanna come out of there. So you might need to grab a spoon and it'll, um, it's really, um, it's almost like peanut butter consistency at the top, but at the bottom, so you'll see liquid, the coconut um, water down at the bottom. So make sure you guys get all of that out and into the pot. 
and then you're gonna add the rest of what the recipe calls for in chicken stock. And I'm actually, with my chicken stock, I'm gonna add the chicken stock to this coconut milk pan so I can get the last little bits out of the, the coconut out of there. Coconut milk isn't terribly expensive, but it's usually around two to three dollars a can. So I wanna make the most of what I have here and get everything out of here so I don't waste any money um, or any ingredients. So I'm gonna mix it in and then make it so it's clean. Okay, so there, I'm gonna mix it in like that. So braising is, we're going to get this up to a simmer and then um, we're going to drop the heat to like a medium low. So medium low on your um, oven or on your stove top, or you can put it in the oven too, if you want to, if you have an oven safe pan, but I'm just going to do this on the stove top. So medium low and let it simmer for 45 minutes or until the squash is tender. So I'll come back and show you guys what that is. Um, I'm also going to do, so I'll switch pans here and I just wanted to show you really fast. Um, and I'm even going to do it in this pan. So just a, a straight sided saute pan. So I'm going to put the heat on medium high. I'm going to add a blurp of oil. So just enough to coat that bottom of that pan. Um, and I'm going to sear off my chicken. So searing off your chicken, um, I just want to caramelize it on both sides. I just want to get some caramelization. So caramelization is flavor. Um, I have my chicken cut up into little pieces here. Um, the, the thing that I really wanted to show you guys was that when chicken, and I think I said this last week when we were in class, but the chicken, when it goes into the pan, that we're going to wait for the pan to be really hot and it's gonna spatter because there's the chicken is like 80% water or something crazy like that. So when chicken goes into the pan um, with that really hot oil, it's gonna get really mad. So again, try to wear long sleeves and then set it in there thoughtfully. Don't set it in from above because you're scared. Try to get like a pair of tongs that are bigger, set it in there thoughtfully and then kind of stand back. You're gonna make a mess of your burners um, if you use chicken, but that's okay. You can wipe it down later. Um, but we want to wait for the pan to get hot, so slightly smoking, or if you were to turn the pan and the oil came up the sides, remember you get those legs that come down, so that what the oil will do is it'll look like legs on the side of the pan. Kind of like if you've seen your parents or somebody swirl a wine glass and they're looking at the legs like that. So we're going to put the chicken in, just these little pieces, and remember, and you want to hear that sear, that sizzle. Um, Put the chicken in. And you just want enough to coat the bottom of the pan. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. If you get too much chicken in there, you're going to drop the temperature of the pan um, and you're not going to get a good sear on it. And what's awesome about chicken and fish, um, well, any proteins really, is they'll tell you when if they're not ready to be turned over. So, um, what I like is when people try to mess with it too much and it's just not turning over. So if your pan's hot enough and you have oil in it, um, it will turn over when it's ready to turn over. Um, but people like right now, I can mess with it and it's just gonna stick to the bottom of the pan. But I wanna wait for it to get that caramelization. So I'm gonna show you that caramelization and then I'll come back and show you the rest of this in just a minute. So it didn't sizzle at me too much. Another thing too, just make sure you add just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan. If you're adding like a quarter of a cup of oil and then getting it really hot and adding in a cold piece of chicken, um, it's gonna get really mad um, and it's gonna start spurting at you. So it also helps, even if, if you have a wok at home, you can use a wok in this application too, because those sides will help um, keep that splatter contained in the pan a little bit more. Um, so, I know it's not quite ready yet. I'm gonna hold off. I'm also gonna season the top, so I'm gonna grab a pinch of salt, and I'm gonna season that chicken with a little bit of salt. If you have pepper nearby, you can give it a little uh, pepper action. So a couple, couple pinches there. Um, while you guys are waiting for it to sear off, you can clean up your area. So with your sanitation bucket, uh, go recycle your cans, do things like that. Um, See, you can see it sticking there. 
and it's not quite ready. There's no um, color on it quite yet. So I'll keep this spoon. And you wanna have some sort of spoon. And you're also gonna need a lid. So some sort of lid that'll fit the top of your pan. Get everything ready to go over and be cleaned up. These. And they're sticking, they're not, I can tell they're not quite ready, and then I'm just shredding them to the bottom of the pan. I kind of just want to find one piece to show you. Not quite yet. So you guys can serve this over rice, um, over rice noodles. I really like rice noodles in this application. Um, or you can just eat it like a soup whatever you guys um, or your family likes. I'll also give you an alternative if people don't like curry. I know curry is, um, I don't know, some people don't really care for it. Um, and I don't want you making it if nobody's going to eat it. So, kind of clean up around here. slight caramelization here. I don't want to run the video for too long. <laughs> with just a little bit of browning on either side. And then you're just going to do everything I did with the butternut squash. Just follow it that way. Okay. See you in a All right, you guys back with curry. Um, so this is what your curry will look like. Mine sat uh, and cooked for oh, about 45 minutes. I ended up adding the chicken to this. So the butternut squash is just, um, it's holding its shape, but it's soft. Um, like you could eat it easily um, with a spoon. So I'm gonna mix that in. I have cilantro to finish it and limes. So I'm gonna taste it and see what I think of the solidity, the salt in it. Um, okay. I feel like the salt is good. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the cilantro. I'm just gonna add a handful of cilantro leaves and I'm gonna add some lime juice. So remember the lime juice is gonna brighten it up and it's gonna make it so you can like taste all the different flavors to separate out all the flavors for you. So I don't like this when it's too limey. So I'm gonna add, ooh, it's hot, spicy. I can get the heat at the end. So that was two Thai chilies, so it's pretty spicy. Um, so I'm gonna do two limes and then I'm gonna taste it. Um, when you guys squeeze these limes, um, wash your hands afterwards because it'll trick you when you taste it and you'll smell it and it'll taste too limey. So this is a braised dish. So braising dishes, like we'll talk about in class, is usually meant to um, break down tougher pieces of meat. So like beef stew is a braised dish, um, beef short ribs, uh, things like that. We'll talk a lot about it in uh, class and you'll learn a lot about it on Ruby. But in this is basically, this could also be considered a stew, but um, we use it as a braising cooking method. So now with that lime juice and the cilantro, Yeah, I like it. And so now it's very bright and I feel like it needs salt. So sometimes you're gonna need to do those little balances. But I definitely think it's good on the heat. So a little pinch of salt, mix it in. And you can serve it over rice or you can serve it by itself or I'm gonna serve it with just rice noodles which are really easy to cook off. Um, yeah, all right, thank you very much.